Alright, what we're going to be looking at in this video is another H-Bridge motor control. It's called the TA8050. It's widely available on eBay for two to three dollars. Um, we'll zoom in on it in a moment. So let me show you around the camera here. Okay, here's my pick chip and everything. It's set up like it was in some of the other videos on off and pulse width modulation to control speed here's my uh, high side power switching transistor operating through an optocoupler it's, a it's essentially a solid state DC relay that can be modulated here is a TA8050 mounted on a heat sink over here is a couple of my lights and the motor and let's flip on the power and of course you can hear the motor running reverse the polarity runs the other way let's zoom in for a closer look alright here's a closer look we can go ahead and cut it on and through the uh, high side switching I can pulse width modulate and speed control or I can bring it down to a crawl let's bring it in just a little closer on the motor so you can see it or you can reverse it the TA8050 is very easy to connect this is one of them here if you can see it it's mounted on a heat sink fits easily into a circuit board directly interfaces to PIC or Arduino and, can, and it can have my uh, motor speed control through the uh, VCC side of it. Again, very easy to use. It's what's switching on the motor and the lights. Alright, that's it for this. Let's look at the internal wiring and how to use this device, which has some interesting features. This is a block diagram of the system connection between the TA8050P H bridge and whatever microcontroller you're going to use. There is, of course, a direct connection to the digital circuits but there is no optical isolation or anything as such. It's, this is a direct electrical connection and for that reason they have to share electrical grounds so they have the same common. In the case of this though I'm going to go ahead and pulse width modulate it through the uh, VCC up here as opposed to where I did it in the ground side of my uh, H-Bridge motor control I built with MOSFETs. Note that your input voltage is from 6 to 16 volts and your current maximum is 1.5 amps. Here is a truth table of the D1 and D2 inputs from the microcontroller as opposed to the uh, pos M plus, motor plus and motor minus. These are some interesting features that um, could prove to be useful. Okay, if D1 is high and D2 is high, well, the motor, both sides of the motor, is low. Okay, they, and if you got a low high, you got a low high, the motor is going to run one direction, high low high low it's going to run another direction if both inputs are low then everything is turned off it's in high impedance now let's look down here at this particular features 
The break mode comes into effect when both M plus and M minus go low. So when this is low and low, you're basically in the uh, break mode. Now you can enter the stop mode when both M plus and M minus are turned off. Well, that's up here is the stop mode. Note the difference between break mode is it's a, when you're when you have centripetal force spinning your motor and you suddenly cut off power. There's still going to be some inertia causing that motor to spin. That energy is absorbed by the system and frankly fed back into it, which will help basically stop it. Um, stop mode is just when it's just turned off, it just stops. And it might go a little bit further depending on your inertia. Here is your package connections. Uh, this is the actual shape of the package. There's your two digital inputs. Here's your motor connections, your ground, your VCC, and this pin has no connection. Real easy to connect up. Now we're going to look at some additional features that this uh, device has. It has overcurrent detection, it has overheat detection, and over voltage detection. Ah, you've got some built in um, extras that may prove to be handy. This is a closer look at the control logic. Your D1 and your D2 set your direction. It can go into brake mode, stop mode, forward or reverse. But in addition, we have functions for detecting over voltage. That is, if you go above 16 volts or over current or overheating, it's going to shut the system down. This will keep you from burning up your um, chip in many cases or damaging a motor. Alright, when the TA8050 is in over voltage or overheat, it goes into high Z. In other words, it disconnects all power from the motor. When the uh, current, when the overcurrent mode, it goes into a 20% duty cycle, as you see here. Um, if you're really overloading the uh, current, it's just going to current limit you by uh, basically pulse width modulating the signal. Could be handy. I uh, wouldn't want to uh, go too far with this. I never tested it, but I don't overload it. Remember, this is a 1.5 amp device. All right, here is the uh, pulse width modulation speed control circuit. Um, I had this in other places, but um, this is electrically isolated, unlike the rest of it. doesn't make a lot of difference because you have to place it in the VCC side of the TA8050 due to the microcontroller and the H-bridge sharing a common ground. But it works just the same. Um, your pulse width modulation signal, be it from a microchip pick or Arduino, works through the infrared emitter, switches on Q2, creates a base current through Q2, um, the collector of Q1 goes to VCC. The emitter goes to uh, the TA8050 VCC. All right. And that's how it basically works. So thanks for watching the video. I hope this was helpful to you. Make sure you visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.